All right, guys, it's here. All the parts have arrived for the new Volcano Hot End. Done tapping everything. Let's go ahead and put things together. Just want to get this on video for, uh, you know, anybody else who wants to do this after me. All these are uh, standard parts on Amazon. I'll link to them uh, in the Discord when I'm done. Uh, but I think I have just about everything sorted out. Uh, the only thing I need to do now is rip the temperature probe out of the existing AnchorMake heat block. And uh, I just wired up this guy yesterday, so this connector is a bitch. Uh, let me show you what type of connector it is, actually. It is JXT-XH connectors, specifically this guy, XH2Y. Uh, I just got a little crimping kit on Amazon. You can probably do the same thing. Uh, work like a charm. It is... Kind of hard to crimp though, it'll take you a couple tries. So I ended up getting a heater two pack and this is still my first heater and I really only needed two attempts uh, and I was good. Although I'm gonna wrap this in Teflon tape at some point, uh, or sorry, not Teflon tape, some heat resistant tape. I think they call it Captain tape, but that's just a brand name. I don't know where that went. That's around here somewhere, I'll get it. But I wanted to talk firstly about the heat sink because this is the most significant part of the mod and this is what actually takes you know work. The rest of it you just put together. Um, but here, I'm gonna turn on the flash so you can see. Well, maybe not. But this guy right here, let's see if we can give you a little look in here so I can show you the threads. All right. So that should be pretty visible. All right, so in there, M6 threads, uh, but I've tapped it all the way to a point. You can kind of see it in there, just kind of floating around. There's the Teflon tube that comes with the printer. And it's just because this guy right here isn't quite long enough, if you can see that, to hack it up all the way. So, I, you know, you need to make the difference in something. I wasn't going to have open air. So I ended up just uh, basically pushing the Teflon tube that came in here as far out as it would go, and then screwing this all the way in and snipping off the excess. So works really well. I wanted to show off uh, that the filament path is still pretty easy to get through. Let's go back so you can see right there. The PTFE tube right here really kind of helps line everything up. Boop. Super smooth. I can feel a little bit of a like a little bit of ridges in there, but I think those are just machine marks. I don't think that's anything that uh, will interfere with the filament path. It's not getting any stiffer the more I move filament through it. And then, yeah, obviously these are just some generic volcano nozzles I got. Passed through that, no problem. So this is an all metal hot end upgrade. So what I'm really worried about mostly is heap creep. So in here, I went ahead and got some, I needed it anyway for the heater installation. I went and got some slice engineering boron nitrate paste. This stuff is apparently the best thing you can get. And since I can't really put any torque on this guy, uh, specifically this guy right here doesn't really have a flat for, see like he doesn't really have a flat for machining anything, or uh, sorry, getting a wrench purchase just surgical tube in there and then the threading. So once I got it screwed all the way in, there's really no way for me to put any kind of torque on it. So I'm gonna need some kind of thread lock and that's where this comes in. This is actually a recommended use from Slice itself if you can't get the torque on there, uh, specifically for their products, but I think it works out fine here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move these off to the side here. Uh, I don't think I'll need too much. I'm just going to be kind of doing this free form in real time. So, uh, you know, if that doesn't interest you, it sucks. You can skip ahead, I guess. Tap off all the, the icky dry stuff. All right, we'll just do a little bit. Oh, God, that takes no pressure at all. That just shot right out of there. All right, and uh, one cleanup later. <laughs> that really sucked. I got it fucking all over the throat, uh, which is like the important part to not get it on. So I am went back and watched the slice engineering video and uh, this is the way you're supposed to do it uh, because that happens if you don't do it that way. 
going to give it a little generous coating here. What I don't want to do is get it in the actual throat. Um, but this should be just fine if I just give it a little bit of a little bit of application here. I think there's a little room for error here. Forgive me if I'm doing this wrong. Just shooting from the hip here. I don't have a technique. At this rate, I don't think I'll need to put any inside the threads. <laughs> I have the heat, heat sink up there. I think I'll have it just about covered. All right. Sorry if I'm drifting it out of frame. I'm kind of trying to do this <laughs> with my eyes and the phone gets in the way if I look if I'm too close to it. Come on. All right, that looks all right to me. Let's just uh, just give it a couple turns here. Should just squeeze out the bottom. Oh, that's largely what it's doing. Okay, good. That's good. Hopefully, I don't get any in there. I'm trying to avoid. That was probably way too much. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and give this thing a cleanup. I don't think there's any in there. We'll do the little, we'll do the filament piece test. Uh, where did I put the damn thing? There it is. Let's see if I get any on here. Uh, no, we look alright. Look good. It should dry nice. I'm just trying to gonna get rid of some of this stuff around the heat break. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, that sucked to clean. Uh, the best thing I found was to let it dry and then hit it with a wire brush a bunch of times because this titanium, all this stuff's harder than brass except for the aluminum, and I don't really give a shit if it's scratched up a little. But uh, you know, I think I did. I think I did all right, all things considered. is not really any. Or a nitride paste in there anymore, and that is pretty well locked in there. Probably gonna give it another 20 minutes, but fuck. Don't, don't spill, do not get any of this anywhere it's not supposed to go, it sucks. I would, I would even masking tape this stuff up meticulously next time. That was totally my bad. But uh, I got most of it off, so move on to the next step. All right, and we're back. One hot end removal later, I got the thermistor out. And the old heater out, although I think the old heater might struggle with the uh, the wire length. So I've got this guy on standby. Uh, don't worry about this. That can go back on. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, the, both the thermistor and the heater. Sorry, I keep trying to bring it up to the lens. What I should do is zoom in. Uh, they had like really spotty coverage of the the whatever paste they're using as thermal compound. Which I thought was very interesting. Uh, and if anyone's interested, this is a 24 volt 60 watt heater, which I believe, these are the heaters I got. I believe this is the same rating. I'll look that up though, before I put it in. Um, which is promising. They're the same size at least, so there's that. Boop, should be good. They look like the same bore too. And the mister looks all right. Sounds good. Uh, I'm probably gonna wrap this guy up in captain tape and uh, this guy too, because they 
the clearances are so tight with this. I'll try to show you. Like when you're screwed all the way in, you're like like that. Um, so the wires have to kind of snake their way out of here. Uh, that's a bit it's a bit tight. So uh, I'm gonna go get tap, cap and tape uh, and go get messy again. Put some boron nitride paste in this. And I guess we'll come back. I'll let you know what happens. And we're back again. Okay, so I did confirm that this will fit, although I couldn't find my captain tape. I don't know where the hell it is. Um, it's a tight fit though, so we'll see. <laughs> uh, first off, let's just put the probes on in here. So this guy, let's just see. Oh yeah, I think he'll make it no problem. The heater's a little bit more important to get right, so let's just get that one in there. get that nice and even put a little on this yeah right here not too much don't need a whole lot I don't think just enough to squish out any of the air gaps once we push them into fit it's not gonna stay wet for long though so we gotta have to hurry up insert from the top where the notches are Ugh. Gross. Push that all the way in there. Whoop. Just tighten that best I can, I guess. Look now. Okay, that's about right. I gotta tighten that down. I don't want that going anywhere. I'm not giving it too much torque, just a little bit. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Right, Armor looks good. nice and clean. Or at least uh, good enough anyway. Let's go ahead and do the temperature probe as well. I'm going to try to just do it like this this time. <laughs> uh, this is just going to be messy. No way around it. Oh, I can't even fit it in the... can't even fit it in there. Yeah, I don't think the applicator even goes in. Oh, no, it does. Just with a lot of force. Kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll just wipe that off. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't go in there. Should have masked this out. I don't think I'll ever learn my lesson. This guy on here. Scrape a lot more off this time. <laughs> It's not going anywhere. Just 
cap that up. Push a little bit more in there. There we go. Give that a little wipe. Keep kind of scraping it back out of the hole. Oh, that's pretty nice. I do believe that's a decent job. <laughs> the only question is, does this stuff ooze when it heats up? I don't know. I hope not. I hope it's fine. Mind that? What do you think? It's not terrible. Gotta, gotta get in there with a little brush or something and get that uh that little bit out of there. But uh, you know, overall, it's not a not a terrible job. I don't think it did all right. Let's see if I could just <sighs> no, not really. All right, brass brush. Hopefully, this doesn't. Fuck the co the uh, the nickel coating up. I don't think so. I think if I'm nice and light, I'll be all right. There we go. Yeah, got most of it. That <laughs> yeah, looks pretty good now. Oop, a little bit more right there. Oh shit. Kind of scraped some wet stuff out of that little hole right there. Yeah, there we go, we got it. Mission accomplished. We got him. All right, so there's our heater block assembly. This I'm a little worried about. Um, I don't know, it is what it is. Not really much I can do about it at this point. I hope this uh, doesn't really throw off. Well, it, it won't really throw it off. They're so close together. All right, let me move on to the next step here. I'm gonna get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. And then probably change gloves because I'm covered in boron nitride paste. I'm gonna get it everywhere. All right, we're back. <sighs> So, the next part of this, I kind of want to get down into here, coat the heat break with some kind of dry lubricant, I hope is a good solution, uh, and something that doesn't conduct heat like super well. And for that, I have Neolube number two. All this is, is just a bit of isopropyl alcohol, uh, sorry, yeah, a bit of graphite powder suspended in isopropyl alcohol. 99% um, pure graphite powder. I will need some electrical tape to seal this back up at some point, but you'll have to keep a bottle like this sealed, by the way, or it'll just evaporate away. This stuff is pretty cool. Um, graphite is usually thermally conductive, but only in one grain orientation. So I'm thinking since one, this is a dry lubricant, and two, it's graphite powder. We're gonna get many different grain irritations, and it's gonna be fine. You know what, I'm gonna do something, I think, a little smart. I'm gonna mask off everything that's not gonna get Neolube on it. Okay. I'll be right back. I finally learned my lesson. It's, it's masked off, uh, because once you get this stuff on something, um, anything short of a lot of water and time is pretty hard to get it out. So I don't really want the what I think is a four uh, heat conducting lubricant on the heat sink. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, please don't go everywhere. All right, there we go. Get a little applicator brush. Bing, bing, bing. Let that drip off. You can get it off of the, uh, off the top pretty easily. You see how like it just wicked everywhere? It's all over me. I barely touched barely touched it and it's everywhere. I'm just gonna let that dry. 
see if I can get most of that off the top. Should come off pretty easy, but I mean, if you get it in threads and stuff that you weren't prepared to get it in, uh, good luck. There we go. We'll let that sit out and dry for like five-ish minutes. And then we'll come back to it. Uh, we'll see you in five. All right, never mind. I forgot how quick this stuff dries. It was like maybe a minute tops, uh, more like more like thirty seconds. But I gave it some extra time just to be sure. I think two coats is going to do just fine. And there's no need to coat the inner hole on this guy. It'll just rub itself in to the grooves, which is the nice part about this kind of lubricant. I think I might have gotten into trouble anyway. Oh well. Once it's dry, this stuff doesn't come off well, but while it's still wet, you can kind of wipe it. Should I keep the contaminants out of the filament path here? Easier said than done, but try to do your best. The better the seating surface, the more seal you're going to get against uh, the nozzle, because the nozzle is going to sit right there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart, uh, the masking, and then we'll attach it to the heat brake or the heat block. All right, let's get the heat brake attached to this thing. Bend these down out of the way. One more turn should do the trick. Okay, that's fully installed. Again, I'm a little bit worried about clearances here. It is very tight. Um, I worry about the insulation here. So I think I'm just going to do something maybe a little bit smooth brain, but I'm going to just back it off one turn. Leave some of them threads exposed right there, but um, it's really not a big deal because what we're going to do is come clean that play up with our nozzle. Uh, this guy right here. And I'll lubricate this nozzle um, with some anti-seize when I finally go to put it on, but I just kind of want to do a test fit real quick. And really, I mean, there's really no problem with this thing seizing up in my opinion. I mean, you saw how easily that went in. That's cold, no lubrication required. And I think I can get away with leaving those studs though uh, a little bit loose here because I do still have a gap to make sure that I'm positively engaged on the seal. Take my little seven wrench here. Let's go nice and straight. Uh, not quite straight. <laughs> Doesn't take a lot of force. You'll be nice and in there. Uh, and that is freaking solid. All right. Uh, maybe the silicon sock might come save the day here. Let's see. We can dream. Oh. Maybe if I route the cables out like this, might be okay. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna get away with that. And this guy might have to come in like this, but he'll make it. So I'll do a little bit of origami here to get this in place, and then I want to just do a test fit. I think that'll about do it. This guy's gonna go right out here. This is kind of a stretch and I'm a little worried about this, but I think I can just barely clip it in there. I'm gonna go see. Well, the good news is it fits really well. <laughs> it actually, uh, I think we actually achieved the goal here. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is take my nozzle, put some uh, high temp anti-seize on there. This is a bit of a just, uh, I forget exactly what it is. Um, here's the lubricant if you wanna look up the technical data sheet, but I think it's, 
a little bit of aluminum powder, a little bit of graphite, like much less than what's in Neolube. Uh, and then, sorry, I'm just gonna get rid of some of this. That smells horrible, oh my God. Uh, and then uh, some kind of oxide, I can't remember what, you don't really need much uh, from what I'm told. I've clearly proven to everybody at this point that I don't think I know uh, how much I'm supposed to do. Wow, I need to open a window. That stuff is horrible smelling. Good Lord. Just hold that thought for a second. Oh my God. Oh. Wow, that's terrible. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure that inspires confidence. Um, let's go ahead. I've kind of already sacrificed this brush here. Well, I don't really have a greater solution here. Just gonna put a little bit of this down the length of it. This is not uh, this is not really a thread lock, by the way. This is an anti-seize lubricant, so this should just come right out when it's time. I looked all over online for the ingredients that are in this thing from the data sheet, and um, I can't find any negative reactions. So I think we're good, at least with brass and aluminum. And I looked pretty much with all of the the metals that would be in contact here. I can't find anything online about a negative reaction with this kind of thing, especially, uh, I looked especially for at high temperatures, couldn't find anything, nothing at all. You can see all the metal glittering. Okay, I think we did a much more reasonable job with this one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go thread that in. There she is, 100% connected. 100% connected and everything. Uh, I thought this was gonna be more of a problem, but it seems like there's not too much strain on the wires. So I think we're gonna make, I think we're gonna get away with it. I would recommend having longer wires. Um, this screw is really long, and I have to substitute this screw right there that holds the back of the heatsink in with a smaller one. Uh, so instead of using this size screw, I just use one of these and then Whatever, you can find another one of those. Not a big deal. It's not like I intend on and fully securing the shroud. It doesn't need all four screws in the back. Um, there's not much strain on the connector, or at least not any more than what was there with the stock heater. And I have a decent clearance. It's not touching the hot end at all, uh, any of these heater cables. So I think we're gonna be okay and get away with it all. Let me put it all back together and we'll do moment of truth. Everything's reassembled. There's the, there's the bad boy right there. And then uh, we get temperature, so that's a good sign. But that's reinstalled properly. Let's go ahead and uh, try heating it up. Ooh, come on, you can do it. Yeah, nice. It's heating up pretty good. Nothing's catching on fire, which is a good sign. Yeah. Nice air movement. Almost looks like the heat break is too good at dissipating heat. This, uh, oh, I looked up the heat cartridge. It's 64 watts at 24 volts, so very comparable. I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. In fact, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit better. All right, let's see. Hot damn. Look at that, boys. Wow, that is a thick strand. 
Woo! We did it.